themselves the guardians of the galaxy. A bunch of a-holes. Welcome back, true believers. Another episode of Anti-Heroes Bar With No Name is upon us. My name is Anti-Hero Comics. Who? Anti-Hero Comics? Legendary Barton? You know what? Never mind. I'm Avery, and I will be your comic book cocktail connoisseur for today. So we got a special little episode today. Um, we're not making one cocktail, we are making five. In the form of shooters. The shooters are gonna be great for you to have for your Guardians of the Galaxy Marathon this week that you were probably going to be having. So make sure your device is all charged up, you have replaced your harbulary batteries, and you are comfortable in the upright position. Let's make some shots. So the Guardians of the Galaxy actually go back pretty far, back into the late 60s, 68, 69. They looked a little different than the ones we know today in the movies. The original Guardians of the Galaxy team that we don't know quite as well as the ones we see in the movies actually dated back to their first appearance in Marvel Super Heroes 18 in about 1968, 1969. It consisted of Charlie 27, Martin X, and even Yondu. Yondu was a part of the original team. So the majority of the original Guardians team are portrayed as the Ravagers in Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 1 and Volume 2, Yondu, Martin X, Charlie 27. The Guardians would be considered to be kind of like nobodies all throughout the 70s after their first appearance in that Marvel Super Heroes 18 book in the 60s for about five or six years until the emergence of Starhawk joining the team, or Starhawk, I believe his name is. Um, he is actually in the movies portrayed by none other than Rocky Balboa. Just kidding, he's portrayed by Sylvester Stallone and he is kind of like the original Star-Lord archetype character. All of the Guardians characters that we all know from the movies, that we all know and love, you got the Draxes, the Star-Lords, the Rockets, the Gamora, and Groots, of course. They all had their own separate individual first appearances and a plethora of books and they all had cameos and other people's titles. But we wouldn't see that movie team for the first time until about 2008. That Guardians team wouldn't really come into the fold until Annihilation Conquest number six, which is the first appearance of this team that we kind of know from the movies. You have your Star-Lord, you have Drax, Gamora, Rocket, and Groot, with the addition of Quasar and Adam Warlock, who we are getting in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. The Annihilation Conquest run, the Annihilation run in general, the big event that Abnett and Lanning created, this massive run in comics. One of my personal favorites. It's a very in-depth story. It features like Nova, characters like Ronan, gets their own like little mini series. But we wouldn't see the movie Guardians until this book. And then following the Annihilation Conquest arc, which is about a six issue mini series, we get the Guardians of the Galaxy in their very own solo title, the movie, the movie version technically, which features Star-Lord, Drax, Rocket, Gamora, and Groot. Um, it's a 25 issue series written by Abnett and Lanning as well. It's an amazing, amazing arc and it really popularized these characters even kind of before the movies did, but they were still considered to be C-list, D-list characters as far as everybody else was concerned. So while they may be C-level, D-level characters in the comics, they will forever be enshrined as cocktails on this channel. So without further ado, let's introduce what a bunch of a-holes. So there's lots of ingredients for today. Obviously we're doing five shooters. I'm gonna introduce the spirits, the main spirits, and then we'll go into more detail when I actually craft the cocktails for the video. But first up, we are going to do Star Prince. I mean, Star-Lord. So first, for Star-Lord, we are going to be using a bourbon, just a good old fashioned bourbon. Very good entry level. Woodford Reserve is honestly, my go-to choice when I'm gonna do a bourbon and not like a rye whiskey or anything like that. If I just want a straight bourbon, it's pretty affordable. And the only other spirit in here, besides all these other ingredients, is gonna be Galliano, a very nice Italian liquor. It actually has hints of vanilla and you guessed it, star anise. Get it, star, Lord, star anise, right? For Gamora's, we are going to be making essentially a pretty standard margarita. And we'll be adding a little something extra to it though to make it a little more movie accurate. We're gonna be using Milagro Tequila and La Luna Mezcal to add a little smokiness to it. And a little extra kick at the end, we're gonna do a little sidecar of Sangrita. And if you can guess by the color, you would imagine why. So our lovable tree friend is up next. We are gonna do Groot's next. And his is pretty much based on all herbal and floral alcohols. We're gonna be starting with the Hendrix Adora Flora, or Flora Adora, rather. 
Flora Colossus, Flora Adora, I mean, it just makes perfect sense to me. And we will be using Green Chartreuse as well. A little bit of St. Germain, and then we're gonna spoon a little sweet vermouth into the bottom. So pretty much all herbal ingredients, especially the green chartreuse, loaded with herbs and botanicals. It's a perfect drink for a treat. All right, everyone's favorite pet rodent. We're gonna do Rocket Raccoon next. His is gonna be a very complicated, I'm imagining a nasty drink. With that being said, not all drinks are made equal and not all drinks are made to be tasty. Sometimes you just wanna shoot it back. It's like a four horseman shot almost. But anyway, a Fernet Bronca. We're gonna use Fernet Bronca, which is like, I feel like it's like an initiation drink. Um, it's very barky, very rich. It's a kind of a, it's kind of its own unique thing. And then we're gonna do some Rittenhouse straight rye whiskey. It's my favorite rye whiskey. It's the most accessible, the most usable in home bartenders, I feel like. A lot of people swear by some Rittenhouse rye whiskey. We're gonna top it with a little classic Coca-Cola. Lastly, we have Drax, the Destroyer. So much like the last shot, rocket shot, um, this is almost like a dare shot. It's a very, I don't know how it's gonna go, but it's influenced by a certain cocktail, a very unique cocktail that we'll get into a little bit later. Not that Drax would know the difference between a classic shot and a blaster shot because nothing goes over his head. He also doesn't recognize irony. Nonetheless, his cocktail is gonna be based on absinthe. And I'm using a Butterfly Classic Absinthe it is a pre-ban absinthe, uh, dates back to Boston. It's actually a really high quality absinthe. I would just go, don't get entry level absinthe if you're gonna be using absinthe. Nonetheless, we'll get into a little bit more of the absinthe talk a little bit later. We're also gonna introduce some Luxardo and we're gonna top it with some Prosecco. And we have a little hint, but it's a little surprise. We're gonna do that when we actually make the cocktail. So like you saw, all of these cocktails are gonna have some extra elements to kind of sweeten it up, sour it up, but we'll go over those when I actually make the drink and well, uh, speaking of that, we should probably just do that right now. Let's go make some drinks. So for Star-Lord's The Outlaw, we're gonna start by muddling some basil, raspberries, and blueberries to express the oils. We're gonna add our one ounce of Woodford Reserve bourbon. Next, we're gonna follow that up with a half ounce of Galliano. And we'll add a half ounce of our Demerara syrup and a half ounce of our fresh squeezed lemon juice. We're gonna finish it off with two to three dashes of Peychaud's 15 bitters. Next, we're gonna do Gamora's, The Sacrifice. First, we're gonna use a Milagro tequila. We're gonna do an ounce of that. I'm using Reposado. You are more than welcome to use a Blanco or an Anejo, whatever you have access to as far as tequila goes. Next for the spirits, we're gonna do a half ounce of La Luna Mezcal, add a little smokiness to it. And then we're gonna add just a quarter ounce of Cointreau. And then we're gonna do a half ounce of lime juice, freshly squeezed, always squeeze your citrus. And half an ounce of agave syrup. I'm using Herradura's, it's actually really good. And then as a little bonus, we'll get into it a little bit later. We're gonna add a little sidecar of this La Original Sangrita, a nice bloody red. I wonder why. For Groots, uh, well, Groots is named appropriately I Am Groot. So we're gonna start off with a half ounce of green chartreuse. You can use yellow if you'd like, if you can find it. We're gonna do a half ounce of our Flora Colossus gin. A half ounce of some elderflower liqueur. I'm gonna be using St. Germain, obviously. And then since we're not really adding any sweetness to this drink, the herbal tea will have a little bit of sweetness in it. It has like some cinnamon bark in it. We're gonna do a full ounce of that to really get the flavors out of there. And then we will be finishing it off with some vermouth, but we're gonna spoon that in at the very end. Next up, we are going to be doing rockets. We gotta make this drink fast because he will probably meet his demise this week. Uh, when the movie comes out. That's what everybody's saying at least. So for Rockets the Experiment, we are gonna start with some Fernet Branca. We're gonna only do a half ounce. A little goes a long way with this stuff. A half ounce of your choice of rye whiskey. I am using Rittenhouse. Half ounce of lime juice, freshly squeezed, as always. And a half ounce of your rich Demerara syrup. Pinkies up. After we pour this, we're gonna add a little bit of Coke to top it off with. So, but we'll do that one last before we shake and strain it. So next up, we have Drax the Destroyer. Duh, 
That's his name. That's the name of the drink because it is a destroyer. It is gonna be a quite a hefty drink. We are going to be using some absinthe. We're gonna go a little heavy handed on the absinthe. By heavy handed, I mean a half an ounce. Yes, most people just spritz their glasses with absinthe to get the flavor in there. We're gonna be going a little crazy. Like I said before, after mentioned, we are going to be talking about the influence of this one later and it'll all make sense. So we're gonna start off with a half ounce of our butterfly absinthe. Next, we're going to add a half ounce of Luxardo cherry liqueur. If you can find another cherry liqueur, have at it. Luxardo seems to be the most commonly used though. And then we're just gonna add a little quarter ounce of lime juice. Just kind of cut it a little bit. It's not gonna really do much. But after that, we're gonna top it. After we shake and we strain it, we're gonna top it with a little La Marca Prosecco. Add a little bubbly. So we're gonna put ice in all of them. We're gonna shake them all at once. We're gonna pour them all at once, just to make it convenient. We're only gonna put a little bit of ice in the cheater tins, just so we don't dilute it too, too bad, because they are still shooters. They're not full cocktails, so we don't need that much dilution of the water. Let's add some ice. And then we're gonna shake and strain each for about 10 to 12 seconds. You don't need to do a full 15 to 20 second shake. Ah, uh, yes, and the reason why I didn't add the bubbly stuff, like Coke and Prosecco, until after is because I dare you to try it and just watch your whole room explode. So then we're gonna strain each cocktail into our chilled glasses. Chill your glasses, folks. Chill your glasses. Starting with Star-Lord's The Outlaw. Next up, we're doing Gamora's The Sacrifice. Here's a little sidecar of the Sangrita to go along with The Sacrifice. Next up, we got I Am Groot. And remember always to chill your vermouth, or else it goes bad, because it's wine, technically. We're gonna spoon a little to the bottom Oh, just a little bit of sweet vermouth. You can use your bar spoon to kind of get it to go to the bottom like that. Just a little bit, goes a long way. It looks very Grootish, does it not? The penultimate one, we got Rockets. The Experiment. And for Rockets the Experiment, we are going to be topping it with a little classic coat. Grab your trusty lightsaber bottle opener. And use a Mexican bottled coat, real sugar. You know, helps. Look, it looks like Rocket already. Last but certainly not least, we have Drax the Destroyer. That's actually an easy top to get off of. We're gonna top it with some Prosecco. But wait, there's more. It wouldn't be violent and it wouldn't be destroyer if we didn't have maximum, maximum destruction. So I'm gonna put a drop of hot sauce. Not that hot of sauce, but still in hot sauce nonetheless. Hot sauce in a shot? I know, unbelievable. Like I said, these last two, kinda like dare shots. So, boop, boop. Oh, man, that's like two drops, but it's okay. It smells like Drax. I would imagine how Drax smells. Next, we're gonna garnish a few of them. I don't have garnishes for all of them, but I do have garnishes for Star-Lord. We use some Galliano, and so we're gonna use some Star Anise. It looks like a little Nova Star, which is kinda cool. We're gonna drop one in right on top. If I get a deep enough groove, there you go. The next garnish I have is a little piece of thyme. Put that right on top of I Am Groot. And then for Rockets, to give it a little more zest, we're gonna cut up an orange slice. You can carve it up if you like, make it look a little extra fancy, get rid of the rough edges. You can even make it a little zigzaggy if you'd like. And then we're gonna be working with a little fire. I'm gonna see how well this turns out. I actually did not practice this beforehand, but it's okay. And we're gonna scorch it a little bit. We're gonna turn that off, not up. And we're gonna make a little raccoon tail, kind of. So now we have nothing else to do except for try the drinks. Let's start with the Outlaw Star-Lord's drink, Excelsior, cheers. That one actually is really good. The berries add a lot. The berries add a lot. You actually get the basil in there too. That's like a nice refreshing drink. You do get the hints of that licorice from the star anise. Really good cocktail. 
All right, so we're gonna sacrifice Gamora now. We are, uh, we are Thanos, and we are gonna throw her off the cliff, and we are gonna get this whole stone. So let's do it. Bloop. See, she splattered. That's what she looked like when she dropped off the cliff. Ooh. Like a very complex strawberry margarita. I think you're gonna like that one, babe. Let's do I Am Groot. Whoa! The tea adds a lot, a lot of floral action going on. So I did my job, I did my due diligence. It actually tastes really good. That's like a one and done kind of drink, like a last word. It's just meant to be enjoyed. None of these are necessarily supposed to be shooters. By all means, shoot them up. Don't shoot up, but shoot them up. And second to last, we are going to do Rocket Raccoons, the experiment. I have a very bad feeling about this. So, so far, some of the influences, this one actually does taste kind of like that. The influence behind the experiment was kind of like the Toronto. Uh, the Toronto's a Fernet Bronca based drink. I've seen a lot of people that just mix Fernet with Coke. So that's why I topped it with the Coke, but the lime juice adds a little bit of sour to it. It's actually quite Nice, I kind of like that. I thought that was gonna be kind of gross, but I'm glad it's not. Probably wouldn't shoot it. It would not go down well, I would imagine. Last, and definitely least, because I am not looking forward to this whatsoever. The Destroyer, we got a little drip of the hot sauce there. I don't know what the hot sauce really did, except put it a ring at the bottom of it. I'm already kind of not looking forward to this. The influence of this one was actually Ernest Hemingway's Death in the Afternoon. He wrote in his book a long time ago, Death in the afternoon, shot of absinthe, the rest Prosecco. Have four to five a day. We're not doing that. We're not even gonna have this whole thing because um, I have to do later. Cheers, Excelsior, rest in peace. Ooh, ooh. So that's actually kind of interesting. That, that absinthe is coming through in a very unique way. You don't taste the hot sauce at all. But yeah, so death in the afternoon influence, kind of like a Toronto influence. This one I kind of just came up with. I just added a bunch of floral stuff. Gin always works with Saint Germain. That's my go-to. Go um, this was just a standard margarita, but the Sangrita is actually quite nice in it. I didn't put the whole thing in there. And then this one's actually surprisingly refreshing. It'd be, I think it would be better as a blended drink. You don't see too many blended beverages with whiskey or bourbon in them. You want to try some out? All right, you can try some out. I think you're going to like, you'll like these three. I don't think you should try those though. So you can try the Outlaw. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's, good. yeah, it's really good. The licorice in there is pretty, pretty strong. You're gonna love this one. She's a margarita girl with a little twist. That Sangrita is really, really good. Yeah, I figured you'd like that one a lot. Oh, I could down this one. Yeah, don't down it. You can down it if you'd like, but they are meant to be downed. They are shooters, but um, you know, as always, drink responsibly. I want you to try this one just because it is very herbal. Yeah. It smells like flour. It smells like dirt. No, I'm just kidding. That one actually smells like dirt. Very pleasant. Mm. And whenever you add green chartreuse to anything, you're gonna get, the, the chartreuse is gonna come in through in so many ways. Did you wanna try the others? All right, let's do it, let's do it. It's gonna be the experiment. Good luck. I don't think you're gonna like that one. That one's the most muted taste to me. It shouldn't smell like toothpaste. It needs something, I don't know what it needs. Maybe it needs some orange juice, but we're not gonna try to fix that cocktail. Like I said, the experiment. We're gonna experiment. This one, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but she's never tried absinthe before, so I kinda want her to try some absinthe, and that's a really good quality absinthe. Hits you on the nose. Ooh, it's really strong, very potent. Not that bad though on the aftertaste. So there you have it, folks. You drink all these and you feel numb. You take a ride on the what a bunch of a-holes and you're going to feel numb afterwards. Uh, you won't feel numb afterwards, but you'll feel pretty good. So that's going to wrap up Antiheroes Bar With No Name, episode two. We'll be cranking these out once every other week or so. And always make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what character you want me to see me do next. I might do a bonus episode of shooters. The shooters are a lot to come up with, but I might do like the villains, the anti-heroes of the Guardians universe. Be sure to go check out Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Comes out this week. I'm going, we're going to see the marathon of it. So uh, I'm gonna sneak these in. We're gonna marathon it. It's gonna be like eight hours long. I think it ends at like three in the morning. But anyway, nonetheless, we are gonna go see it. You should go see it too. I am not sponsored in any way. Um, 
I'm just a big fan. I am Groot. As always, remember to nerd out and drink responsibly. Till next time, Antihero Comics, out.